of the goddamn world is fucked! Oh man, Aliens! What a film! My favourite action film of all time! Intense firefights, amazing set designs, and characters that have so much chemistry, it's unbelievable! The original Alien is an outstanding suspense-driven horror film, but this sequel switched gears and became a pure action film. It is very rare for a sequel to change genre and it work this well. And it was a very smart move because when you watch Alien, you see how dangerous just one of them is. Naturally, people are gonna think, what if there was hundreds of them? So it makes sense for the sequel to do that. And what happens when you get hundreds of them is you go to war. And it was nothing short of epic. So, the story. After spending 57 years in stasis, Ripley and Jonesy the Cat are found and brought back to civilization. Which is precisely where Ripley should have stayed. But when asked to go to planet LV-426, which is where her crew was attacked by the facehugger decades earlier, she agrees. You see, a terraforming colony has been established there, but has gone dark. It might be nothing, but it might be something. So fearing the dreaded Xenomorph's involvement, Ripley is sent with a team of colonial marines to investigate. Now of course what's really going on is that the powers that be are aware of the Xenomorphs and want one brought back for military research. Right, I understand she was sent in as a consultant because of her experiences on the Nostromo, but ultimately there really was no need. All the marines needed to know from her were the basics, which they were already told during the briefing. I cannot really see why the company behind all of this wanted Ripley to go. Yes, they tried to use her as a host to bring one of the aliens back, but any one of the marines could have filled that role. Honestly, it felt like they made a sequel and just wanted Ripley to be in it for the sake of having Ripley in it. Don't get me wrong, I am really glad she was in it, because Sigourney Weaver did an incredible job and it is one of her best performances. The film would have definitely suffered without her, but from a story point of view, I don't really feel like she needed to be there. In any case though, she was there. And she was a badass. Kicking ass, taking names and owning the show. Did I really just say that? She was pretty badass all the way through it, but especially in the third act, where Ripley goes to the alien nest to save Newt, who is the only survivor of the colony and she was played really well by Carrie Henn. And when Ripley goes to the nest, despite being confronted with an unspeakable terror, it was no time to be scared and submit to fear it was payback time. Attacking them with flamethrowers, assault rifles and grenades, she was unstoppable. Which was impressive given that this was the first time we saw the alien queen. And just how terrifying that thing looked. I mean, normal xenomorphs look deadly as hell. But the queen? I would not want to mess with her. Yet despite the effective reveal of the queen, it is the exact same scene where Ripley is at maximum levels of badassery. You would think that either the reveal of the Queen, or Ripley being an unstoppable force of nature as she saves the child, would dilute the other's effectiveness. But no, they both work really well. No wonder Aliens vs Predator didn't wow audiences. The Xenomorphs already met their apex predator in this film. And that is all before we hear Ripley's iconic line. Get away from her, you bitch! Ripley in the cargo bay loader mech going toe to toe with the alien queen. I can't tell you how cool that was. So yes, perhaps they could have come up with a better reason for Ripley to go with the Marines. But ultimately, it paid off. It paid off big time. So the Marines themselves. This ragtag bunch of Vietnam War era inspired American soldiers were nothing short of great. My favourites being Michael Bien as Corporal Hicks, Jeanette Goldstein as Private Vasquez and Bill Paxton as Private Hudson, who was given a bit of swearing to do in the script and apologised to Carrie Henn each time he had to swear because Paxton felt bad about swearing in front of a child and it turns out 
that Carrie Hen didn't even understand half the swear words that he was saying. That's just a nice story. Or the one where Carrie kept deliberately messing up her lines on this scene, just so she could keep going down the chute because she found the slide to be that much fun. In the end, director James Cameron made a deal with her that if she did her line correctly, he would let her play on the slide as much as she wanted, and he kept his word. I like hearing behind the scenes stories like this. But yes, back to the Marines. The fights they had with the Xenomorphs were gritty as hell. They were close quarters, intense, scary and visceral. When they were screaming out for help as they were overwhelmed by the aliens, you felt their panic and you wanted them to overcome the enemy's attacks. It was boots on the ground soldiers versus a deadly alien threat at its finest. And the chemistry between them was so good. I love the banter between them and how they genuinely felt like they'd been on years worth of missions together, which was actually coaxed along with a shooting schedule trick. Like most films, aliens were shot out of order and James Cameron insisted that the first scene with the Marines be shot last. Because this is the scene that shows them just chatting and having a laugh. So by doing that scene last, the cast had to work together through the rest of the film, and then when they got to that first scene, the camaraderie between them would feel genuine. And I just love that. That is how you direct your cast. Good directing techniques and decisions to help them perform better. Which is in stark contrast to the first movie, with Ridley Scott deciding to traumatise his cast with animal blood and guts to get a real reaction. Yes, both roads did lead to a great film, but Aliens had a better journey. But of course, like most great films, it wasn't without its little dramas. Aliens was almost cancelled because Fox didn't want to pay Weaver's higher salary demand compared to what they paid her in the first film. Thankfully, Cameron was able to talk them around. And I think it would be fair to say that given that the film made 10 times its budget during the theatrical run alone, Fox is also pretty glad he managed to talk them around as well. Another problem that faced the film was a clash in style. During the famous alien nest scene, Cameron wanted a dark set lighting to create an eerie atmosphere, which ultimately won out. But cinematographer Dick Bush refused to do this and went with a brighter set lighting to show off the incredible set design. Which, funnily enough, is actually the same set used to shoot the Axis chemical scene in Batman 1989. And when the crew went in to prep that for shooting for Batman, the alien nests were still intact. Which of course means, any time I watch the Axis chemical scene in Batman, I'm going to be thinking about aliens. But yeah, I digress. The clash in style. They never saw eye to eye, and in the end, Bush was fired for refusing to follow Cameron's direction. I do understand his wishes to show off the hard work that had gone into the set design in more brightly lit detail. But at the end of the day, the director is the director. It's just a shame it had to come to that. And what would an alien film be without an android? This time, the burden of leaking milk falls upon actor Lance Henriksen as Bishop. Unlike Ash in Alien, Bishop did not betray Ripley, not that the audience at any point trusted him. He acted the part cold and creepy as hell, which to be fair does make sense. He was an android. I prefer the term artificial person myself. Sorry, yes, artificial person. And he acted the part deliberately creepy so that the audiences wouldn't trust him and we would just be waiting for him to turn on Ripley with some programming from Weyland yutani to bring an alien specimen back. Which ultimately never happened, so good bluff movie, good bluff. Still didn't mean he made it out of the film in one piece though. Poor Bishop, you deserved better. But hey, at least you got the honours of being ripped apart by the alien queen. The android artificial person may not have been sent by Waylon yutani to bring an alien back, but Burke was. Played by Paul Reiser, he was the sleazeball corporate lapdog that everyone can get behind hating. 
He tried to play everyone for a fool. Not one life mattered to him. He locked Ripley and Newt in a room with a couple of face huggers. His comeuppance was very much earned. In fact, his character was written to be such a shitty person, and he played the part so well that when his sister watched the film, she actually smacked him for what his character did. That's just funny. Before I wrap up, I just want to talk about the special edition and whether I would recommend seeing that or the theatrical version. Including 17 minutes of extra scenes, the special edition is James Cameron's preferred version and it's definitely my favourite way of watching Aliens. It includes several extra scenes that are nice additions to this film, such as the emotional scene where Ripley finds out her daughter has grown old and passed away while she was in stasis. I promised her that I'd be home for her birthday. Her 11th birthday. The picture of her daughter is actually Weaver's real life mother, which was a nice touch. Then there's the turret scene. The marines are making a stand against the aliens, and they use a couple of auto turrets to buy them some more time. We watch as the turrets tear through ammo, which is a good visual representation of how unstoppable this horde of aliens are, and that the time is running out before the marines have to make their last stand. There are several other character building scenes, such as more marine banter and Ripley being demoted from her old status which she held before she spent 57 years in stasis. These are all nice add-ons to the film, and further expand upon the characters, who they are as people and what it is that they are going through. So yes, special edition all the way. It may be longer, but it's definitely worth it. Overall, Aliens, steeped in style and adrenaline pumping action, I will give it a 10 out of 10. It is truly well earned, I have seen it so many times in the past and I will see it so many more times in the future. It's a fantastic film. You've been watching Good or Bad, and if you've enjoyed today's video, please go ahead and hit those like and subscribe buttons and I will see you next time.